Hey lads, welcome back to Billy Ray Garage. Moment of truth here. I'm gonna start putting this bad boy back together. Uh, we're gonna start with the, basically the opposite way we took it apart. We're gonna put the cam in and then put the lifters in and all that stuff, the lifter trays, and then work our way down to here where we will put the oil pickup tube and the oil pump. Before I even start that, I gotta clean some shit up. I think we've been off this old gasket material. Now this is an aluminum engine. Do not use a metal scraper, get a plastic one, because a steel one will dig into that and could cause you some issues. Once I get the engine completely back together, then I will seal up and get it ready for paint. I have settled on red paint for the block. Probably gonna go to a silver or a gray for the oil pan, which is sitting over there, which is covering something. We, well, we already covered it, so that was in the previous video. A little racing baffle. And then I think the front cover I'm gonna do black. So it'll be black, red, heads will be silver, intake will be black, throttle body silver, valve covers are red, and see if we can make a cool little color scheme here, make it look purdy. And then I think the bell housing, I'll either, I'll either paint that gray or silver too. Now I was going to paint the engine black, but I figured if I have oil leaks, might not be able to see it on black. Red, it'll stand out a little more. So I really wanted a black engine though, but what are you going to do? And I also got to clean up the cylinder heads and like where they're going to go. And I also got to spray down all the new stuff because there is uh, milling oils and uh, like leftover little things of metal on there. And you don't want that getting in your engine. So I'm going to clean them off probably with brake clean. I have some acetone floating around somewhere and just clean it up really nice. Make sure everything goes in as clean as possible. And then, uh, you know, once I have the engine built, then I'm going to clean it up some more and try and get a little paint job going. Let's start getting into this. All right, guys, clean the cylinders up the best I could with some sea foam. Now I got this little plastic little scraper and I'm just going to scrape off as much of this Big stuff as I can, and then I'll get some denatured alcohol, wipe it down, some brake clean, and clean it up. Now, I have everything kind of on a downward angle, so when I scrape it, nothing falls into the, the coolant galleys or the pistons or into the, where the lifters go. So that's the route I'm going. So I'm going to scrape this down, get this all cleaned up, and then I'll get back to you. All right, guys, got one side of the engine all clean, and just doing some finishing touches down here. Now, if you're having a problem getting all this gasket off, I don't know if you can see it, but that black material, that is leftover gasket. You want to get rid of that. Best way I found was just brake clean. And for the really stubborn ones, there's a, I used a brass brush and just gently went over it. Don't go too hard. It shouldn't dig into this, but it seems to scrape off this material just like that, like right there. You need it off. And another thing to look for is gasket material sticks right along the cylinder wall. So make sure you get all that. I think I got it all on this side. I'm gonna keep trucking along, get this side clean, and then we can start throwing shit together. Yay! All right guys, got the uh, cylinder heads all cleaned up. Well, where they go. Here's the other side, nice clean. And I got it underneath too, where the oil pan goes. Now I didn't do this side yet because I'm going to pull that cover off, so no big deal. I'll clean it later. And I'll clean the whole thing up actually. Gotta wait on some things for that. And in the front, I have yet to clean this side yet because I'm not gonna put that on right now. Waiting on a few things, so we can at least stick the cam in, do all that stuff. All right guys, about to put the cam in. I got some uh, engine assembly lube, lube, and I'm about to douche the cam in it. I'm gonna be very liberal with it. So yeah, I'm gonna lather this thing up and I put the water bolts back in it. I just sprayed it down with brake clean and it should be nice and clean from all the milling materials and milling oils that came with it. We lather this thing up, slap it in. Okay guys, here we go. I'm gonna go to about here, then I'm gonna lather up the rest of it so the stuff's not all over the place. Hey, here goes nothing. There. Add some more of this shit. Stuff's thick. There. Pour this shit on here.
and we're in. All right, guys, first thing you want to do, we're going to skip this uh, Camry Tang plate because I did not get it yet. But later on in this video, you will get that being put on and it'll be delivered. So we're going to keep going. We're going to go with the oil pump. Now, before you do that, you want to put your brand new chain in because if you do not put that on before the oil pump, then you are kind of screwed. And then you have to take it all off again. So we're just going to lay this here. Beautiful. And just going to let that dangle there. And then we're going to put our new oil pump on. Okay, so now, I don't know, well, you're going to see it now. There's a little hole right here, and there's a little hole right here on the block. You want those to jive, so just uh, scooch this on, do a little twisting action. Come on, get in there. Get in there. There it goes. So you got to play with that a little bit, give it a little wiggle. And then we want that hole to line up, which it is right there. And we'll put it up. So we got our... We got our oil pump pump it in. Got the 10 millimeter bolts right here. Now, I looked up the torque specs on these. It says like nine foot pounds. So just don't go crazy tightening it. I'm just gonna snug it. I'm gonna put a little blue Loctite on it because you don't want to lose that. Now, I don't think you need the Loctite these because when I took them out, they didn't have Loctite on them. Just to be safe and being that this engine's going back together and I don't want to pull it out again just to get to this, I am going to Loctite it. Okay, oil pump is on. Let's give these a little snug up. S snug and snug. Like I said, don't want to go too crazy. You will snap these. I'm just going to give them a little more. So that should be it for that. And now we'll move on to the pickup tube, which obviously goes up inside of here. Now there's only one screw holding this on, but I bought a part. But it's a little clip that extends from here goes over the pickup tube and kind of clamps it down. So instead of just having one screw holding it in, we're gonna have two. Later on in the video, I will show you that, but right now I don't have it. And when I get the rest of the parts to continue the video, which will be a few days for me, like a couple minutes for you, I will show you the installation of that part too. All right guys, I put the O-ring on here, which I lubed up with oil, slid it on, lubed up the O-ring, and even lubed up the little hole up there with oil. Now, in this melon kit for the high pressure oil pump, you get a couple options here. So it comes with a red spring already in it, which would go up into there. Now it comes with a blue one. That'll decrease the oil pressure by eight to 10 pounds. So if you're running really high oil pressure and you want to tune it down a little bit, this is what you have to install. This black one that comes with it, that's for a Copa Camaro. So we have nothing to do with that in this particular vehicle. And also, it comes with a green o-ring now if you read the directions i don't know if you could tell but the ones where my thumb is those are tapered and grooved and oil pumps or pickup tubes i should say those get the green now ours is a straight one so we get the black got the black one on there i'm gonna shove it up in there i'm gonna put a little loctite on to install this in here i'm not gonna use any loctite here now both of these well the nut and the bolt i'm just gonna snug them up as I see fit, they're very low torque numbers, so I'm just gonna snug them. So yeah, let's get this bad boy in. Okay, so this is gonna go in just like that. So I'm gonna start it up in here first and then try and get this aligned. Beautiful. And it's probably gonna require a little bit of pressure to get it started, so just wiggle, wiggle, and we're in. All right, so we got the pickup tube in. I'm just gonna start that nut. I'm gonna put some blue Loctite on this and get it started. And just real quick, I sprayed these down with some brake clean just to get all the foreign debris off of them. So we're gonna get that started. That's a 13 millimeter and that's gonna be a 10. And we'll get this in here. And then we're just gonna snug this guy down because we don't wanna go too crazy on it. Let's give it a little and a little more. There we go. And then we're gonna snug this guy down. Snug that just. Enough. A little more. There we go. All right, I like it. All right, guys, our pickup tube is in. Yay. Also, another thing is I sprayed a bunch of brake clean down through here. I, I sprayed it through the top of here, sprayed it down, and then sprayed through here. There was some nasty stuff in there, so I blew it all out. All right, guys, I ordered this little part. Samusin? Gomusin? I don't know what it says, but show it to you right here. Boom. So if you haven't noticed on the pickup tube, there are two bolt holes and the pickup tube only uses one of them. That's where this bad boy comes in. So this thing goes up 
and over and around and then you bolt it in it gives it a little extra strength to clamp down on this because if you're racing around you do not want to lose that or you know comes loose a little bit and drops down because you will lose oil pressure and that will not be cool so i'm going to throw some loctite on this little bolt zip it in and we'll be done with the pickup tube all right so this thing's a 5 16 for this particular model yeah i got a little box wrench so we're just gonna snug this down if i was going the right way and we're just gonna snug it up you don't have to go crazy i think these things are only like nine or ten foot pounds i put blue loctite on there crank it down so now as you can see it's got the extra clamping force down on it so you have the original bolt and that one and this little bracket so hopefully this pickup tube does not fly off all right guys got my new camera retaining plate it's got a brand new gasket if you're doing this might as well replace it uh this is the old one and eh, let's see if you can tell that one's smushed so you won't be able to use this again this guy's got a little more to it so i think this thing's like 20 bucks I don't even know the price. I forgot what it was, but I think it was like 20 bucks ish. So definitely worth replacing. And you know, you know, deal with this one. Yeet. So let's put this in. So these were 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, they are torqued to 18 pounds. So let's uh, snug this bitch up and get it in. Oh, and also what I like to do is just take a little oil and just smear it around the gasket just so it seals a little bit better. All right, 10 millimeter, 18 foot pounds. Let's give this a go. All right, installed. All right, guys. We're gonna be putting on the cam sprocket. Uh, I got the little dot on the crankshaft, on the gear there. As close to dead center as I could get it, so I'm gonna try and struggle and fight and get this sprocket on and get it aligned with the dot that is right there at the bottom. I want that to line up with this one just like that. So I'm gonna throw this on real quick and see how big of a struggle this is gonna be. Oh, another thing is, if you do this before you put the oil pump in, it makes it a lot easier. The chain is a pain in the ass to get out from back there. So, like I said, got a little ahead on this video because I was waiting for parts. What are you going to do? I am going to put the sprocket in, get this raised up, make sure your chain is where it's supposed to be. And we will try and get this thing in. So, that's not my dot. My dot is somewhere right there. All right, I think we got something right there close is this all right guys gonna torque these down these are for the cam sprocket uh these are 10 millimeter bolts and we're going 26 foot pounds uh i don't know if this is going to spin but i just put a bar well a wrench on here just so when i go to torque these it doesn't spin it doesn't do any of that crazy stuff so here's the 26 foot pounds of torque very good so that's torqued on. Yeah, just to uh, give you an update, I don't think I updated you on this, but this is a uh, this is an LS7 chain. Uh, I got it from Texas Speed. It's all I was recommended to go with, so I went with it. We got our dot here for our top dead center. You won't be able to see the one down there, but there is one down there. It is lined up. But obviously, after the engine's all put together, I'm gonna spin it a couple times just to make sure that no valves are hitting pistons and you know could fix it before it goes in the car itself. So let's go on to the next thing. All right, guys, we're gonna start putting the lifters and lifter trays in. We've got the lifter soaking in oil. One of the bags actually busted open and started leaking. So yeah, we got, uh, got some brand new lifter trays right there. Ooh, fancy, ooh. And we're gonna figure out how to put them in. I don't know if it's easier just to drop them in first and get them kind of lined up and then push this bitch down or stick them in the lifter and then just drop them all in at one shot. These things are pretty tight like your mom, so they should hold. I might go that route and just drop them right in. We'll close out this video after I put these bad boys in, and then I will show you some of the new things that I bought. Uh, nothing crazy, just a lot of accessory stuff, but at least get that covered. All right, guys, I got the, the first set in. So what I did was I dropped them in one at a time, obviously. And I don't know if you could see in there, but there's a flat spot on the top and bottom of the lifter. Uh, yeah, you want those on the top and bottom. As you'll see, the orientation of the lifter tray. See how it's got a flat spot on the top and a flat spot on the bottom is round on the sides. So that's how you want to put these things in. Now what I did was I dropped them in and just got them oriented. And then I basically snapped this thing on top of them. I'll show you in one second. 
And as far as the orientation of these new trays go, I don't know if that matters, but I figure if it's got the little drop down up here, I figure it's to avoid that. So I'll show you real quick with these. Let's see if I can do this one handed. And we're on, we're on. Okay. All right, so these two are being whores, so I'm gonna pull them out and I'm just gonna snap them in, drop them in, just to make life easier. Yeah, so this guy played nice, so I'll stick you there. Just to make sure they are all in. Push down, push down, push down, rock it a couple times, and then you should be able to just pull all of them out at once, because there's pretty good grip on these things, so. So yeah, they're basically all in. Right there, you can see the alignment. I'll push this guy in more just to get it in there. Push you in a little more to get in there. And push you in here to get in a little more there. So yeah, that's what it's gonna look like and just drop her in. And then just don't forget your little 10 millimeter bolt. And like I said, don't crank down on it. You don't wanna break the shit out of it. It's brand new. It's plastic or some kind of composite, whatever it is. Just don't crank the shit out of it. Just nice and snug, should be good. And then I'll go work on the other side, get those put in, and we'll wrap up the video. I'll show you some of the new goodies that I got and all that stuff, so. All right, guys, got all our lifter trays in and all our lifters, they are in there, they are straight, they are compressed down. Like I said, do not go friggin' nuts on these things because they're bolts, not nuts. So don't go nuts on bolts. So just snug it down and it stops turning, it stops turning, just stop right there. You don't wanna snap that thing off in there cause that'll be a nightmare. And just like that on this side too. So we got a good amount done. We got the cam sprocket on, the chain, the pump, the pickup tube, and this new little piece that I got here. So yeah, we're in good shape. So in the next video, we're gonna be putting on the heads, the gaskets obviously. Uh, we're gonna clean this up a little bit more get a little denatured alcohol on it because I did get a little bit of oil in there. Like right here, so we gotta clean that up. And then we'll do the uh, we'll do the push rods and the rocker arms too while we're at it. Try and bang that all out in one video. Get basically the top end of the engine together. All right, let's go upstairs and uh, look at some of the things that I got to improve this GTO engine because 20 years old, change everything. But real quick, well, you guys probably already saw the video. If you haven't, I will show you. I was able to source a master cylinder. Woo, 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 woo. So if you saw my last video, the vlog, uh, yeah, I went out to, or went, went up to Pennsylvania to friggin' achieve one of these friggin' things. I did my first vlog, so if you didn't check it out, go check it out. All right, let's go up to the spare bedroom and look at some shit. Hi, putty cat. All right guys, up in the spare bedroom and we got some goodies. I already went over the new clutch system. So before the engine goes in, I'm gonna deal with the master cylinder as well as the master cylinder for the brakes. What else do we got here? Yeah, I had a casualty with the wiring harness. So this is a cam positioning sensor. This thing ripped off when I was pulling the harness off. I got this off of, uh, I believe Parts Geek. Yeah, it was Parts Geek. So I was able to source one of these. You just cut the wire, splice it back in. Uh, got a tensioner pulley. I believe this one's for the air conditioning. Got a front seal for the crank. I already had one, but I ordered another one. Can't go wrong with two. Uh, this is one of the heating lines I was able to source off of there. So we're gonna replace that since I found it. I got a brand new crossover tube. I'm just waiting for the little gaskets that go right there. Also no big deal, they'll be coming in a few days. Couple other things we got in this box. We got idler pulleys. Got a couple of them. That's my front crank seal. We got some new power steering line. So I could cut it in and replace the old because it was starting to leak. So I don't know if it was the hose or the clamp, whatever. So we'll tackle that soon. Uh, what was this? This is another tensioner pulley. This one's for the water pump. Uh, in this box is a new stock harmonic balancer. I just went with the stock one. I wasn't gonna mess around with something else. So no big deal, I'll stick this box in the box so I don't lose it. This box, got a brand new, let me put a light on. Got a brand new water pump from GM. I think this thing was like 200 something dollars. So I just went with the original one. I didn't wanna fuck around with a Chinese knockoff. I already got some of these with uh, the Texas Speed package that I got earlier in the year. Oh, late last year, I guess. So keep that close so the key cat doesn't get in there. I think that about covers it. So 
Got a lot of stuff done. The engine control module, that thing's tuned. And like I said, we sourced a master cylinder, so that's awesome. We could probably get this thing roadworthy soon. Yeah, I want to show you every bit of this thing going together. So thanks for watching. Continue to watch if you want to see this build play out the entire way. And I appreciate all the subscribers, the 3,000 plus views that I have and all that stuff. So keep it up. You guys are awesome. Got a bunch of comments, questions about things. Keep sending them. I'll answer them. And hopefully soon we get a video out of this thing running and just tearing up the mean streets of wherever I decide to let this thing rip. Let's just say that if you watch my vlog, part of that trip was to scout some roads, you know, see what roads were just paved, see which ones got some little turns in them. So I may have found a couple roads that hopefully don't get named after me after I wipe out. Oof. Don't want that. So anyway, thanks for watching. You guys are the best and I'll see you in the next one.